Visual art can tell many stories at once, inspire us, and expand what we understand about the world. That's great, but it can all be quite intimidating too. A new project here at TVO called TVO Arts hopes to help making some iconic Canadian art more accessible to all. With us now to explain, in Los Angeles, California, artist Camille Turner, whose work is featured in the series. She is also a PhD candidate at York University. And back here in the provincial capital, Natasha Negria, executive producer of TVO Arts, and Catherine Baird, director of the TVO Arts series and creative director at the studio, Friends and Enemies. Welcome to you all. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, this is really exciting. Uh, Natasha, I wanted to start with you. What's the main goal behind TVO Arts? Yeah, so our project is comprised of a series of YouTube videos and an interactive site. And really what we wanted to do was to show how powerful art can be, um, that art can inspire critical thinking and that it can actually improve our lives. Um, and we wanted to do that in a way that was a bit different than some of the other arts content out there. Our approach is not top down. The idea is not to tell you how you should feel and what you should see when you look at art. But the point is to immerse you into a specific artwork. Um, and we also have in the components made use of everyday Canadians' impressions of art. So what do real people feel and think when they encounter an artwork? And how does our lived experience impact our interpretation of art? Um, so that was a big part of it for us. And then, of course, another part is celebrating Canadian art, Canadian artworks, um, amazing artists such as Camille Turner and her series Miss Canadiana, which of course is, is featured in one of our episodes. Well, that was a great segue, Natasha. Camille, I'm actually <laughs> going to come talk to you, but um, we wanted to show a short clip from that feature that you are in. Uh, Sheldon, please roll. By centering her own body in her art, Turner uses performance to confront how blackness is perceived in Canada. Miss Canadiana was a persona created to do just that. The idea came to her in 1998, after an experience at a shopping mall in North Bay, Ontario. Camille, let's pick up the story there. Uh, what happened at the mall in North Bay, and how did it inspire you to create Miss Canadiana? Well, it was a long time ago, and yet this experience is seared in my memory. I was basically walking through this mall, you know, not doing anything strange or, or dressed strangely, but people were staring at me and I just felt like disappearing. Uh, but I was so aware at that moment also um, of the, the um, contradiction between the, the mythology of Canada as this place where everyone belongs and my lived experience. And so at that moment, there was this image that flashed into my mind of uh, myself embodying that contradiction. And that is how Miss Canadiana was born. Catherine, it's hard to take your eyes off Miss Canadiana. Mm -hmm. uh, what is so unique about TVO Arts and how it showcases artworks? Right. So, you know, we've used a combination of techniques like uh, design and illustration and animation to really deconstruct the work of art. Uh, this is a project that's made to make art feel accessible to everybody. And there's a lot of art that doesn't feel that way. So we use those techniques to decode and deconstruct those works of art. At the same time, we also use the same techniques to reconstruct stories. So in the case of um, Camille Turner, we were able to reconstruct this uh, moment from so long ago that actually inspired her to create this piece. And, you know, where do where do artists ideas come from? And how can we actually use um, design and animation to bring those back to life? That's uh, a lot of what we've done in the series. Camille, when you uh, you said that this happened so long ago, but obviously it's something that you still remember quite clearly. Uh, Miss Canadiana sheds light on some really thought provoking themes. What is it saying about being Canadian and belonging? Um, to me. What I'm looking at or what I'm, I'm thinking about is the, the mythologies of nationhood um, and the unspoken principles that prop up this idea. Um, 
you know, there is a there is a principle that's operating there um, that says that there is the real Canadian and then the diverse other. So what Miss Canadiana is doing is the diverse other is stepping into that role of real Canadian, and that really kind of throws the whole thing into chaos. It it um, reveals these unspoken um, um, principles, and um, so yeah, I I, I feel like um, if if it was a white woman, for instance, doing this piece, it wouldn't have that same meaning. It's when my body um, transgresses that that boundary that um, it's understood that there is a boundary that that um, this is this is this is revealing the the unspoken codes. And Camille, Natasha said that this is this is about making art accessible. Um, what do you think you can get from art um, with your piece, Miss Canadiana? You might not be able to have in, say, a printed article or even just a face-to-face -face conversation. Yeah, there's something visceral that happens between people. You know, when when you see someone, there's there's um, a communication there. I. I've seen um, people respond to Miss Canadiana in in very visceral ways. You know, little girls, little little um, children of color, especially, um, respond to Miss Canadiana in a particular way. It's like they're looking at me and they're seeing themselves, and um, so it's it's been um, a really kind of immediate response because it's. You know, this is not an an art piece on the wall. This is this is an actual um, person that you're responding to. So I think um, um, performance art, in particular, and this type of performance art, it it just really um, draws people in in into a relationship. Natasha, how did you choose the artworks for the series? Well, it was very hard. <laughs> There's a lot of incredible um, Canadian art to choose from. Um, but, you know, we really wanted to, to choose artworks, obviously, that were visually striking, but also artworks that could spark curiosity and be conversation starters. You know, our hope is that um, all sorts of people will want to watch the videos and, um, and experience the website. But another part of this project is also that there could be classroom use so that teachers could use the videos um, and these artworks um, as a starting off point for conversation with students. So we had to keep that in mind. So some of the artworks we chose are really iconic and really well known, while others are slightly less known, but all of them really raise important themes about our relationship to Canada. Um, and, and we also wanted to make sure that all of them felt really timely and relevant today, regardless of when they were made. So for example, um, one of our episode centers on Emily Carr's very famous church in Yukon Village, and it was made in 1929, but it very recently underwent a name change. So it's it's still being talked about today. Um, and, and there's also um, Jeff Wall's sudden gust of wind. Um, you know, he's a conceptual photographer. And in this, um, in this piece, he's depicting the instant that a gust of wind blows by. But it actually took more than a year to make this photograph and it's completely staged and manipulated. And, and what Jeff Wall is doing is he's saying that photography is as much a creation as a painting. And he's drawing our attention to the fact that images can be um, completely constructed and fake. And of course, this is something that is incredibly relevant and important in the digital worlds we live in today. Uh, in our final minute here, Catherine, uh, why was it important that the videos and website are quote unquote an experience? So the whole goal of this project is to make art accessible. And our experience is really um, the concept of being a personal trainer for art. A lot of people don't feel that art is for them. They don't know how to connect with art. And our goal was to give people the tools and understanding to how to engage with any work of art, even if it seems inaccessible or you don't understand it. Um, our goal is to give the, give you those tools in order to uh, be able to have any kind of engaging conversation about a work of art and feel that it's, uh, you know, there's no wrong answer. Your answers and your ideas are all valid. 
we can't wait to see this roll out. Congratulations, everybody. Thank you so much for spending some time with us tonight. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. The Agenda with Steve Pakin is made possible through generous philanthropic contributions from viewers like you. Thank you for supporting TVO's journalism.